All right, guys, today is another Mothberg episode. And the cool thing is, over the last, you know, few weeks, we've been chipping away at this little Tupperware container. And finally, we are on our last moth. So we are going to finalize this this container. My, my wife is gonna be so happy as I get rid of some of these containers full of moths. And we are going to mount the last moth in this container today. Guys, this is a another Arinus species, a sphingid. This is Arinus obscura. Let me see if I can focus on that in there. Uranus obscura, the obscure sphinx. It's a white vine feeder, which I, don't, I haven't seen white vine in Key Largo, but we caught this in Key Largo in July. So we're gonna give this guy a mount right now. Let's get to the video and get to this moth. Okay, guys, the, the obscure sphinx, Uranus obscura, is actually a species that we have not found very commonly in the Florida Keys. So uh, when we found a couple of them in one night back in July, I was actually pretty um, pretty amazed at that because we very rarely ever see them. They feed on white vine in the mainland, and I don't think there's any white vine in the Florida Keys, to my knowledge. So, uh, But we're gonna mount this Uranus, and guys, just, just so you're aware, We've got all of the Floridian Uranus species represented in this little group here. We have Uranus obscura, which we're gonna mount here shortly. We've got Uranus elo, which is our most common Uranus species. We've got Uranus um, alopi, our papaya sphinx. And even though it's not technically in the genus Uranus, it sure as heck looks like it. This is Phryxus caicus. It's in the same general group, but it's, was put in a different genus. And you know, there's a few other Sphinx species in here as well. We've got our half half window, false window Sphinx, half blind Sphinx, our groat Sphinx, and our pink spot hawk moth and a few other things. Guys, we are going to get this re uh, rehydration chamber working. We put some fresh hot water in it. We put some chlorocresol in the container to keep it from getting moldy. And we are gonna give this a few hours and see if we can mount some of our mods free here. All right, guys, next specimen is going to be another Uranus species, the smallest Uranus in Florida, Uranus obscura. And this guy is really tiny. This is a tiny specimen. Even for our typical Uranus, usually they're a little bit bigger than this. But... I'm happy because it's a beautiful specimen. Um, X-Acto knife, I'm gonna try and go ahead and do my surgery. If you don't see what I'm doing here, I have a video where I do this on a giant sphinx and I show you up close. I suggest checking that out. The video is called something like doing surgery on a moth, something like that. Um, it shows you all the detail, how we're severing these tendons to make mounting our moths easier. All right, got our number two black enamel pin going through the thorax, right through the middle. Um, we're going to just give a little bit of an invert here. Loosen up those muscles. That Obscura has this cool little pink, like peach colored hind wing. It's pretty cool. And so we are going to, we have the right size board already selected. And we're going to go ahead and pin this guy in here. But I'm excited because I've only seen a small handful of them in the Florida Keys. So I'm excited to have some 
representation of this species from the Florida Keys. And so I'm gonna show you guys up close. Uranus obscura, pretty moth, peach colored hind wings, gray abdomen, gray forewings, um, a white vine, like milkweed feeder. So I'm not sure what they're eating in Key Largo, but we'll see if we can get an idea. Um, but time to get some paper over them, over the wings and get this guy uh, drying. So in a week or so we can take them off the board. So this is the piece of paper that I cut out with the labels. And so I'm going to cut out one of the date location labels that I created. And by the way, your date location label is actually more valuable scientifically than your identification label because identifications can change depending on how taxonomy goes. And there's always somebody smarter than we are that will come back behind us and review our work. So. If you don't know what something is, that's okay. But I do know what this one is. It is, I'm gonna right hand write this one and it's Arenus Obscura. And then I'm gonna put determined by David Fine. Okay. So then it's as simple as cutting this out. Just make it pretty. Okay, now we have our specimen, we have our name label and our date and location label. Now what we have here is called a protom block. And what we're gonna do is the protom block is used to you know, make the labels at a certain place height on the pin. So it looks uniform in your collection. So the first thing we do, the body of the insect is in the first hole on this proton block. So we always put the insect and push it down when we're mounting it and it's down, the pin comes down to the first hole and the body is that far up off the block. But these two holes here are for the, the, for the two labels. So what we're gonna do is we want the, uh, the, the date and location label on top. So what we're gonna do with that is we are gonna put that one on first Okay, and so what we do is we kind of puncture the label, push it down just a little bit, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it into the middle hole and push it all the way down. So now that label sits proudly underneath our specimen. Look how nice and neat that is, all right? Now for the name label, do the same thing, puncture it right in the middle, and that one's gonna go in the third hole, the shortest hole, and we're gonna push it all the way down. So now we've got a really well labeled insect specimen that's worth a lot scientifically. This is ready to be donated to a museum because it has all the proper labeling and it's got our date location label, it's got our uh, identification label on it. All right, so folks, you can have all these cool specimens like this and catch all these cool things and be a collector but I can tell you right now that if you're not labeling your specimens, then you're really missing out on something. The, the scientific community is missing out on something if you're not labeling your specimens. Because one day I'm gonna pass on and I'm gonna leave all this to a museum or donate it most of it uh, long before I go, hopefully. But it's it's not worth much to them unless it's, it's labeled and identified. So uh, please do that. It's a plea from me to you for the scientific community, on behalf of the scientific community, make sure you label your specimens. So guys, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hopefully you learned something and you will start labeling your uh, your bugs. And hopefully you, you've got a few tips on um, some easy ways to do it. If you, if you have a better way to do it, please let me know, comment down below, and I'd love to hear from you. So guys, till next time, 
Let's get out there and enjoy our environment and go catch some bugs. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.